अवतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यम करवा समस्त जनकल्याणे निरत चिन्मय देवा सद्गु ब्रह्म विवर ओ चिन्मय सद्गुरव नम योगे न पदे नाचा मल शरीर वैद्यक प्रवर मुनीना पातंजली प्राजलीना तो हरिओं by now <clears throat> when we have reached the kaivalya pada or the fourth pada of patanjali yoga sutra our conceptual understanding about the world or the universe should and must have undergone a change the universe is nothing else but and a flowing flux of things things that are constantly at motion movement and the movement means change the motion the movement the change on a continuing basis on a massive scale is sinkanan of prakriti the universe the maya the creation the srujana when things are created in this universe the sum total of all the changes is same nothing gets added nothing is subtracted all this sounds very close to laws of thermodynamics the law of conservation of energy it took human brain couple of centuries to arrive at the conclusion that the matter and energy are interchangeable but the munis and the rishis knew about it and they looked at the universe as a massive flow of things constantly in motion vibration tad ejati tad na ejati it shall vibrate it shall not vibrate meaning thereby there is a constant movement and change in the state of everything the buddhist people caught it right dwelt deep into it a muni of a phenomenal mind nagarjuna written elaborately on in buddhism about this change about this constant transformation that is happening however the buddhist fail to understand what is the purpose behind it if everything is changing what is constant is it that that which is not changing is constant or is it that the constant is there by its sheer presence so it is constant i am talking about the subtlety of some philosophical aspect 
Some things are not there. That is why some things are there or some things are there by there itself. That is the difference between Buddhism and Hinduism. If everything is changing, everything is nothing else but the change, then that which is not changing is nothingness. Because the moment you become something, something has to change. So that which will not change has to be no thing, nothing. Shunyavad, the void of Buddhism. The Hinduism doesn't believe in it. Yes, everything is changing. Moment a, cha a, a thing is a thing, bhavati. The moment anything is born, anything has come as a part of this universe, it has to change. However, there is something which is not a part of this universe and is not subject to the change, for that matter, not subject to any of the laws that are pervading this universe. Imagine a river that is flowing from Gangotri all the way to Bay of Bengal. If that is what an analogy of a Prakriti or the universe is, we are the mortals on the banks of that particular river in a small village, jumping into the water, swimming into the water, using the water to quench the thirst and using the water to harvest the field. But we belong to a small village on the banks of the massive river that is going on from Gangotri till the Bay of Bengal. It is impossible for such a person staying in that village to imagine the expanse of the river. And of course, it is next to impossible for him to fathom the depth of the river and the length of river unless he decides decisively to cross over and take the journey slowly towards the route and go beyond the origin of the river. A yogi with his sheer determination, with his ability to concentrate his absolute impeccable prowess in doing the sayama, the tarana, the dhyana, and the samadhi, he is able to reach at the root of the river, he is able to reach at the beginning of the prakriti, he is able to reach beyond the asmita tattva and reach right up to the mahat tattva and when he reaches at the mahat tattva now in his arms he has the entire prakruti at his disposal at that stage since he is on the bank of the prakruti he is at the root of the ganga it's possible for him to go beyond the ganga beyond the prakruti and going beyond the Prakriti is nothing but, but understanding that this is where the Prakriti starts. Knowing Prakriti to be a separate entity than the Purusha, the consciousness, the Chetana, the Chaitanya is the Purusha Khyati or the Kaivalya. Such a yogi who has realized the difference between the Purusha and the Prakriti, has attained the Kaivalya. As far as Prakriti is concerned, he is a master of the Prakriti and he is able to mold the Prakriti the way he wants. In fact, given a choice, he would create another universe of another type. For example, we have a universe where the highest evolved animal is human being. Having two, leg, two legs, two arms, and one head, and two eyes, and one mouth, and two ears. A yogi who decides can create universe where there will be no human beings. There could be another being which is at the top of the evolution, and he may be having as many as hundred hands. It's possible for a yogi to do that. He can create an universe. The question is then why he doesn't do that? He doesn't do that because his sankalpa is same as the sankalpa done by one more yogi earlier. His name is Ishwara. The first yogi 
who created this universe is Ishwara, the Lord of the universe, and the one who has reached to the state of Ishwara. That is why Krishna Bhagavan is called Yogeshwara, Yoga, Yogi, and Ishwara. Yogi E Ikaranta plus Ishwara E Ikaranta, two E's make it A Yogeshwara. His Yogi and his Ishwara. Meaning thereby, every yogi who has reached to the state of Prakriti transcendence is nothing else but Ishwara himself, or rather Purusha himself. And that is why he does not wish anything like destroying the entire universe. He can if he wishes to, but he will not because his Sankalpas and the Ishwara Sankalpas are same. So the creation, the maintenance and the dissolution, the Brahma, the Vishnu, the Mahesh, three presiding, controlling deities who are subservient to the Yogi or the Ishwara because they are nothing else but the part of the Ishwara itself. Now that Yogi has reached at such a stage because he has transcended the Asmita level, Every stage that the yogi crosses, he becomes the master of that stage. When he crosses the stage of Pancha Mahabhuta, the Pancha Mahabhuta becomes his slaves and he is able to do all kind of siddhis that we call. For him, it is a child's play. Similarly, when he crosses the Asmita barrier, the barrier of individualization, the very fact that is ingrained in me and you is I am a separate person. I am an entity by myself. Individualization, crudely called as ahankar. The Vikruta ahankar is the deadliest exhibition of individualization. But Shuddha ahankar is also individualization. Every upabhogya vastu requires a bhogi. The moment you become a bhogi or kartrutvavan, kartrutva, bhartrutva, bhoktrutva, bhranti, it is called because of individualization and the yogi crosses the boundary of individualization, asmita tattva, and then reaches the mahat tattva. The one who has reached that mahat tattva now can create different asmitas, meaning what? He can create individuals. Plant an asmita, a new individual is formed. Because who are we? Who is a jiva? Every jiva is nothing else but a speck of consciousness expressing as asmita. Rest of his body is nothing else but the assemblage. Amnacha bhuta sanghataha. All the pancha mahabhutas, they gather around the spark of consciousness and a body or a jiva is formed. So to form a jiva, you don't have to really assemble the pancha mahabhutas. They will automatically come. To form a small pond, all you need to create is create a small uh, a ditch. The water will flow into the ditch and the pond will be formed. You don't have to really bring the water. The water means prakriti. You don't have to bring the prakriti to form the jiva. All you need to do is just implant a Asmita Tattva, individualization. And such Asmita Tattva, when it is formed, naturally it forms a new Jiva, and that is what is called Nirmana Chitta. And when the body gets formed around it, it is called Nirmana Kaya. So the yogi at this stage is able to do or create Nirmana Chittas and Kayas. How many he will create depends. Depends on the yogi's desire. And it is not a desire of the kamecha. It is a natural instinctual desire. Yogeshwara Krishna had 18,000 concerts, married to 18,000 gopis or whatever it is. How is it possible that the person can be at 18,000 places? Nirmana Chitta Nirmana Kaya. Yogeshwara was present at all the places wherever he wanted by creating another Krishna. So that means 
the yogi's intention of creating this multiple nirmana chitta and kaya depends upon the desire or the wish or the purpose for which the yogeshwar or the yogi of that order decides to do it a nascent yogi nascent meaning the one who has recently crossed the asmita tattva and reached the mat tattva he utilizes this nirmana chitta and nirmana kaya to exhaust his karmas now comes the question it may come to the mind that the yogi has already exhausted his karmas he has already exhausted the bandhas he has already become uh, viveki because he has viveka khyati then how is it that he is still interested in burning the karmas the way of burning karmas is not only the karma ashaya need to understand clearly that karma ashaya sanskar is different and a vasana sanskar is different not much elaboration has been done in bhagavad gita and other treatises about karma as much as patanjali maharaj has done in the patanjali yoga sutra the karma is basically nothing else but the output of kleshas the root of every karma is klesha we have already seen that klesha ha pancha ha there are five types of kleshas avidya asmita raga dvesha abhinivesha these are the five kleshas as long as five remain karma will continue to happen and avidya being the root of all these avidya unless destroyed karma will continue to happen the presence of avidya itself means you have a body you are a jeeva the upadhi called jeeva the state called you as being born in this prakriti or for that matter you shall be part of the universe in fact you come in the universe because of klesha remove your kleshas you have no business in this universe you are already gone kleshas especially if they can be destroyed so easily we all know we all have been hearing about the brahman the atman the atma khyati the viveka khyati the kaivalya everything is all in the books and only in the words heart of the heart we are convinced that i am so i am so this is my family this is the world that is the tree this is the mountain this is itself avidya and since the avidya cannot be easily destroyed nahi kashchit kshanam api jatu tishtat akarma krut why karma cannot be leaving you even for a moment is because seeing a thing through the eyes is karma we have a very wrong notion about karma as you know when i am not beating somebody when i am not shouting at somebody i am not doing a bad karma sir even good or bad karma there is a karma in observation there is karma in listening you are listening to what i am talking is karma smelling is karma the results of and the phalam of this karma may be different good bad neutral whatever it is but karma shall not leave the the person simply because his kleshas cannot leave him and maybe you will control the raga maybe dvesha maybe avinivesha maybe even asmita but avidya is not something to be controlled it is something to be destroyed the yogi has destroyed the kleshas so now what happens is when the kleshas are destroyed a question comes to the mind when the klesha is destroyed karma is no more existing jnana agni sarva karmani bhasma sat kurute is because a jnanam means destruction of avidya when avidya is gone as a klesha mulak thing all kleshas are gone kleshas when they are not existing karma cannot exist this is the fundamental postulate of the shastras if the karma is not existing then what is that yogi trying even at this stage to exhaust the vasanas 
if the karmas are not existing is it possible that the karmas are exhausted kleshas are not existing but the bhoga is still there we need to listen carefully to what we are discussing we are discussing a situation in which a yogi has destroyed the karmas because he is a klesha rahita because moment you are klesha rahita karmas are gone and karmas means what karma shayas are gone we shall come to this part in the next few sutras little more in depth to know the types of karmas and how do they what is difference between karma sanskar and the vasana sanskar what is destruction of karma sanskar and what is destruction of vasana sanskar the question here is the nirmana chitta and the nir nirmana kaya this the reason for this creation by the yogi is of different reasons for a avatara purusha like a krishna who has entered into the prakruti to show to the world paritranaya sadhanam etc etc yada yada dharma se etc etc he has taken the because he is the purest of the he is a consciousness so when they take avatar to come in the prakruti cannot come into the prakruti as you have klesha why because coming in the prakruti itself means you have to have karma for karma you have to have prarabdha now the problem is krishna is consciousness he wants to enter the universe his own creation but his own rule he cannot violate he cannot say that well i am the chaitanya so i will come inside the prakruti and just be there as a krishna no sir anybody who comes into the prakruti has to have a prarabdha the very fact that you are in the universe or the prakruti is because of your klesha then what do they do because the maya or the prakruti is nothing else but ashrita of the chaitanya the chaitanya comes to prakruti and borrows the prarabdha it is like this the consciousness requests his own ashrita maya or the prakruti to give some prarabdha so that he can be born inside the prakruti and that is how the krishna took some prarabdha and was born into the jail in the night with his mama willing to kill him it is all borrowed prarabdha sir it is not that krishna had done some mistake in the earlier life and he had murdered somebody so his mama was trying to murder him which is the normal settling of score or theory of retribution or karma vipaka doesn't apply to the avatara purush because these are borrowed prarabdha ram krishna dik sharira is the effect of the borrowed prarabdha by the chaitanya himself and for him what is not possible because the whole prakruti is ashrita upon him when such a avatarit yogeshwar has come down naturally although he has prarabdha he has no karma shaya what does that mean he has bought with him only the tiffin meant for only that particular janma after that there is no food no tiffin nothing because there is no sanchita so after the avatar kari is over after the arrow came from that vyadha and hit the great toe of the lord sri krishna he smiled because everything was over all the avatar kari is over that is why where whatever karma he did kausa chanura mardanam whatever it may be it is a karma although for good cause if he has really done something to kaus and the chanura he should have got punya karma and punya karma means he would have gone to the heaven and enjoyed the fruits of that sir there is no enjoyment of fruits in heaven there is no punya karma because there is no karma for yogeshwara the reason being he is klesha rahita so he is exhausting the prarabdha which he has borrowed but he is no more getting any output from it so there is no karma shay karma shay janya sanskar vasana janya sanskar that is why after krishna's avatar is over where is krishna sir he is no more there because he is back as a chaitanya 
when will he come back yada yada hi glanis bhavati up to him me and you cannot decide me and you cannot understand also when why that time krishna why not now krishna he can come again if he decides he can come if he comes i will not see him he is coming regularly i cannot see him i can see him only in certain occasions because some people saw him these are all the limitations of the buddhi of ours plagued with pancha klesha the yogi who has actually been born out of continuing evolution of consciousness now we are not talking about avatar we were talking in patanjali yoga sutra in major major way about the yogi who has evolved over a period of time the yogi who has evolved from a commoner and slowly gone to gone through sampradnat samadhi a sampradnat samadhi at a higher level and ultimately reached at the level of this mahat tatva who creates this nirmana kaya what is his purpose of creating the nirmana kaya one of the purpose of creating nirmana kaya is he has stopped the future karmas but he already has a prarabdha that is already set in the yogi can exhaust this prarabdhas by creating nirmana kayas or everything so that the backlog is completely made zero we all know that a jivan mukta take example of guru deva he suffered from the disease why as a karma vipak of what of the prarabdha that he brought with him that means even though while doing the bhoga of the prarabdha in the present birth of his midway he became liberated but sir liberation or no liberation that which is set into the motion as prarabdha shall continue is the rule of the universe or the prakriti even the realized soul is no exception to them it is a different story that the karma never no more bound binds them but the bhoga of the prarabdha has to be undergone by them whether you are a commoner or a god realized soul and that is why the prarabdha when it is set into the motion we know what is prarabdha and sanchita because we have studied the karma into detail now there is a reason or there is a definitely a reason for us to restudy what are the impacts of the karma on us that is where the seventh sutra comes into the picture it says karma ashukla akrushna yoginah trividham itaresham what it means is the karma of the yogi is ashukla akrushna while for others it is of three types trividham itaresham so let us first understand what is this different types of karma the karma is of four types one is called shukla karma shukla karma means punya karma or it is called dharma samskar there was a person who was very very thirsty i was drinking water i was also thirsty but i realized that i can quench my thirst in perhaps half a glass rest i will give it to him what happened sir a karma happened how karma happened you thought about giving this water to him so there was a desire think about think about the sequence the first thing is desire to help him now to execute that desire you took the water so karmendriyas acted gnanendriyas acted and you gave water to him his thirst was quenched and he said maharaj thank you so much aapne mujhe pani diya now that he got the water at a time when he needed it you did a job which is good as per the dharma so dharma sanskar of positive type which is called punya karma which is called shubha karma is called shukla karma so this is called shukla karma now what happened you did one karma <clears throat> but you would say no sir it is common it is natural to give water to somebody no sir <clears throat> you did a karma the prakruti is going to ask you you have done a good job 
now i am going to give you something nice to drink at a time when you are actually thirsty instead of water now you will be getting an absolutely beautiful fruit juice to drink as a phala vipaka of that particular karma when will i get that drink that depends upon the gahano gati it may be in few of the births down the line you are walking on the street and that time there was there is so much of heat and somebody will call you inside the home and tell you sir would you like to have mango juice and you will be shocked to know that you know for an a stranger like me he is giving me a sir this mango juice has come as the karma phala vipak of the water that you gave to that person this is called shukla karma similarly for the krishna karma <coughs> krishna karma there was a, a a cow or a dog which was going on the street he was going his own way you were going your own way but the fact is that you felt like hitting that particular small poor animal with a stone so you hit it with the stone and the the dog went uh, quaking with pain karma has happened <clears throat> now that particular karma sanskar has gone back and fallen into a pool called karma ashaya this karma ashaya sanskar will give you birth when how gahanogati that will come into the picture how much kalam will be there between this act and the phala bhoga depends upon the type of karma only thing that can be said with certainty is when a sattva guna sampanna purusha that means when a yogi or a muni or a rushi is troubled by a commoner then the karma phala bhoga is immediate we all hear that the rushi became angry and he gave the shapam when he is a muni or a rushi why would he give shapam because he has already gone beyond the enmity part the arthavad behind that is because this fellow has troubled takshaka he put that dead skin or whatever that snake into the uh, um, garl into the neck of a meditating muni within 7 days he was supposed to die now the question is such a phala bhoga of sattva guna sampanna is immediate that is why in our shastra it is said that if you are do not have reverence to the auspicious people or the things at least do not curse them it is very bad it is called sattvika santap now when this krishna karma is committed of hitting that particular dog with a stone after few births you shall be a beggar because of of course other karmas in that begging situation you are begging at some place and the small children come and hit you with a stone and you start crying saying that what i have done with these boys why are they hitting me with a stone sir you hit the dog with a stone couple of births back this is a phala bhog this is called karma vipak so krishna karma shukla karma easy to understand now comes the third type which is slightly difficult to understand it is called shukla krishna karma good and bad karma together how can good and bad karma be together there is no single karma good in this world there is no single karma bad in this world majority of karmas are shukla krishna how i went in my ambulance very fast and i drove it myself even being a doctor because the patient was dying this is shukla karma when i was driving very fast to the hospital unfortunately under the tire of my ambulance one small insect got killed what happened sir you were doing shukla karma krishna karma automatically happened take another simple example Oh, we have yajna in our home. 
we are doing puja in our home so what i did i lit the lamp deepak jyoti namostute i did that i felt auspicious i felt what a good karma i did unfortunately because of that heat a small insect which was flying around got burnt even i was not aware of it i am speaking to you now but because of the force of the air that is traveling through my throat there are couple of mycobacteria which are getting killed or maybe they are getting pain because of my talking we are talking on patanjali yoga sutra a shubha karma but a shubha karma is simultaneously happening meaning thereby there is nothing that can be done there are only three things in this world there are only three things in this world which are only shukla karma otherwise everything is shukla krishna or krishna which is those three things tapam swadhyayam and dhyanam these are the only three things in which you do not you do not create krishna karma simultaneously or otherwise everything that you do has to have a good and bad component together i plucked some flowers to put it at the foot feet of my guru deva sir you plucked the flower the pain was suffered was suffered by the tree no but my purpose was very good yes you did a shukla karma but simultaneously part krishna karma has been done and mind well the law doesn't expect or doesn't exonerate you just because you were doing you, you, you murdered somebody for good reason he was about to rape that woman so i went and killed him fine that's fine but you know but it is a part of the duty it is definitely i have to do it i cannot be sitting absolutely correct but it is not pure shukla karma it is tinged with krishna karma so shukla krishna karma all of them except tapam swadhyayam and dhanam because in these three things you are not connected with any of chetan sadhana jeeva or achetan sadhana jeeva i am sitting in dhyana this is the only stage when i am not at all causing any kind of disturbance pain or association with any of the other chetan or achetan jeevas it's my own body with which i am doing tapam dhyanam and swadhyaya that is why doing karma which is the least krishna and maximum shukla is the prerequisite for chitta shuddhi why do you do puja archana and all that by doing puja archana maximum time is devoted to the shuklata of the karma karagre vasati lakshmi in the morning you say why because you don't want lakshmi to come and it is not because you want money the fact that your mind is now thinking about devi devata etc all these ultimately puts you towards shuklata than the krishnata but siddha yogi has a fourth type of karma which is called a shukla a krishna that means his karma does not create neither dharma nor adharma even the punyam also doesn't come to the guru deva did even chanting of bhagavad gita he did, will not get any punya for that yes i am making a very bold statement guru deva whatever good things he did he is not going to get punya karma why he is beyond the good did and the punya karma try to understand this we must understand this तुका म्हणे आता उरलो उपकारा पुरता तुकारा महाराज सेट नाव ओनली टू डू उपकार आय एम हिअर ही डिन से आय एम हिअर टू पुण्य संचय नो पुण्य संचय इज नॉट द एम बिकॉज दे आर दे आर कर्म इट सेल्फ इज गॉन इट इज निदर शुक्ल नॉर कृष्ण सो योगी इज हॅव अशुक्ल अकृष्ण कर्म कर्म अशुक्ल अकृष्ण योगी नहा trividham itaresham for the others it is of three types now comes the question the jivan mukta since he doesn't have any karma good or bad there will be no phalam 
there will be no bhogam if he is doing a karma which has no bhogam no phalam then comes the question he is continuing to suffer the praradha so only bhoga is happening guru deva had a surgery on the heart bhogam but while doing the surgery on the heart he did not create any new samskar that is why he had a bhogam but it was not a karma so they don't do karma but they are suffering that means they are having bhogam that means the jivan mukta is in a deha called a charama deha charama deha means last body once the prarabdha is set in we generally have a feeling that the prarabdha is set in for one birth from the sanchita a certain amount of karma comes out and you start experiencing it that is called jati ayu bhoga sati mule tad vipaka jati ayu bhoga we have seen the sutra the question is the ayu can be much longer because we are only used to the ayu of 70 80 years but that's our ayu there are so many yonis here the ayu can be very long bhoga can be too many now the question is one choice for the yogi is to wait and do the bhogam and keep waiting for maybe next i don't know how many years because i have to finish the prarabdha but the yogi being the master of the mahat tatva he does this nirmana chitta nirmana kaya and finishes the bhoga master why because this is the last show so let it run in 10 theaters and finish it no more shows after this this is another reason why nirmana kaya and nirmana chitta is there so prarabdh bhog tivra karanat vegavan this is for the yogi who is evolved from the bottom to the top but yogi like krishna yogeshwara when he comes as an avatar he doesn't have this he has basically got limited properly calculated prarabdha for the sake of the people he is born for the jivas he is born and not only jivas like and the human beings he is come here he is born for the sake of jivas so there are and there are animals there are uh, birds there are so many of them they are waiting for krishna to come that is why the nirmana chitta nirmana kaya is a specific purpose for the avatar it has a specific purpose for the evolving yogi because it is at a stage where the master decides how to use the prakruti the evolving yogi uses it to completely get rid of his bhogas and when the bhogas are to be gotten rid of we need to understand one more thing and that is we need to understand tat tad vipaka anugunanam eva abhivyakti hi vasana nam now we are coming to the critical part of what is vasana sanskar and what is karma janya sanskar we'll try to understand it with the help of analogies it's it's slightly subtler subject of philosophy vasana we have been generally calling vasana as vasana desire vasana we have all confused it it's not that way there is a karma that happens i gave trouble to somebody i slapped a person this is karma now what happened with the slapping there are certain experiences i have in the mind remember karma and karma janya experience these are two different things think about this karma and karma janya experience 
I ate mango. This is karma. The karma is over. I ate mango. Fine. Because there was a desire. So I ate mango. So there was a desire that is karma. So as a phalam, I ate the mango. All right. Karma has happened. Now what happened? When karma phala bhoga was happening, when I was eating the mango, in my mind I felt, ah, what a mango. There is a typical taste, you know, it is such a fine taste. It stays in the mind. What has happened? The experience that you get out of the phala bhog is called vasana sanskar. Karma janya sanskar is different than vasana sanskar. I slapped somebody, now there is a karma janya samskar, I will be slapped in future. So karma karma retribution, that is fine. That is karma janya samskar. Karma janya samskar leads to birth. Because you slap somebody, you will have to be born again because somebody is going to slap you. So that means karma janya samskar is responsible for birth. What about vasana janya samskar? When I was eating the mango, I felt good, good, good. That good, good, what that experience, what happens to that? That is vasana janya samskar or it is experience out of bhoga that remains in the chitta and comes out only in the form of smriti, memory. Memory is nothing else but the expression of the samskaras or the experience that the person has experienced while performing the bhoga of any phala. So karma janya phala bhoga janya samskara is called vasana samskara. Now these vasana samskara are the most dangerous things of the world rather than even the karma itself. Because karma janya samskara goes and lies into karma shaya, the pool of karma which is responsible for giving you further births. Sir, this man has done this thing. All right. For him, he will be born after 148 births for uh, doing the phalabhoga of that particular karma. That is how karma shaya is working. But what about the experiences that have been accumulated while performing karma? They keep accumulating. They keep accumulating. And there are so many of them. Vasana, Janya, Sanskara are called... Abhuta Purva Samskar, they lie buried for a very long time. Now, this all sounds very funny, but one example is given by in the Bhasham. If you are born as a cat, Marjara Yoni, what happens? In Marjara Yoni, you have experience of walking on four legs. Mind well, a cat will, of course, walk on four legs. No, this is no, of course. Walking on four legs is an experience. The cat will be taking a position while killing the bird. The cat will be slurping with his tongue. The cat will be sleeping but always half asleep. These are all vasana samskar. Why? By being in the body of the cat, you get some experiences those experiences are buried deep, deeply into the chitta. Now, after 200 or 2000 births, you are now expected to be born as cat. Why as cat? Because there is some phalam that you are supposed to suffer being a cat. But when you are born as a cat, what is that you are doing as, as a cat, as a phala bhoga? you will be hit by the owner. The cat will be hit by the owner as a phala bhog of your previous karma. So you are born as a cat. But when you are born as a cat, you must have all the tendencies of cat, then only you will be called a cat. These tendencies are brought from that buried past. All the vasana janya samskara are brought and given right at the time of the birth as a cat. So you behave like a cat. The human child, when it starts growing, it immediately starts walking on the two legs. Why is it that he doesn't continue to crawl for uh, 100 years? Vasana samskar. 
it is tortoise of the, the the turtles who give birth to the babies on the beach they come out of that egg and start walking towards the water this is the example given by swami vivekananda why the turtle walks towards the water why not towards the land and die vasana janya sanskar and what is that you are born as a turtle please go to the water this memory this smriti this embedded thing is vasana janya sanskar that means karma phal bhog is the reason for birth but moment you are coming to exhaust your karma phala proportionate vasana sanskaras are born that means suppose i have done lot of punya karma now i will be born in deva yoni all right when i am being born in deva yoni all my vasanas all my thoughts all my aptitudes attitudes shape everything is according to deva i can't have rakshasa appearance as deva why because in deva yoni because of my punya karma i am there so right now i am in human form i am known as dr jadav in this form i came because there was some bhoga that i am supposed to do in this body so this body was given to me because i am born the body was given to me and my bhogams are happening now one by one my days are numbered days are always numbered unlike english saying days are always because jati ayu bhoga ayu is always numbered for those many years i shall continue to exhaust my phalam now when i am doing this bhoga phalam while exhausting my bhoga phalam i am creating new karmas that is a different thing but when i came in this body and i was supposed to be made doctor but not practice the medicine again bhoga phala while this was happening i was given appropriate intelligence so that i can understand medicine then i was given a a, a good body of this particular type to have that bhoga then i walked like a human being i laughed like a human being and as a human beings i did not go and eat the clay on the uh, side of the street why when i will be born as a pig i will be eating the fecal matter on the street because that is the vasana sanskar of the pig so when pig somebody is born as a pig vasana sanskar as eating the uh, waste matter automatically comes but there is no bungling up eating the fecal matter will not be a part of the human behavior why those vasanas are not proportionate to the births that i am getting so phal karma phala bhog is for the sake of karma shay sanskara ripening into prarabdha agreed so in other words vasana is the cradle in which the baby called karma phala bhog is sleeping without the cradle she will not sleep but cradle is not responsible for the birth of the baby the birth the jati ayu bhog is because of karma and its phala vipak vasanas do not give rise to birth they are loosely used so we say vasana gives you to the birth and all that but there is a finer dissection in yoga sutra about this asankhya vasanas are lying in avyakta form in sanchita and they are there for many 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 births so that is why tendencies are vasanas tendency to walk on two feet is a vasana of a human birth tendency to walk on four is a vasana of vasana sanskar of dog birth previous dog birth so these raw materials are lying there now imagine somebody has exhausted the karma like the yogi he has exhausted the karma what about vasana sanskar because the yogi has exhausted the karma phal bhog sanskar completely that means karma shaya has been annihilated karma shaya is no more existing so there is, there is no karma no new karma is happening 
there is no old karma left so he will not be born again because karma leads to birth now when karma is not there and the birth is not going to happen accompanying tendencies what will happen to them crutches you you walk on crutches right if the man himself is not there what will the crutch do it will lie there but this lying crutches this lying supta vasana are pretty dangerous if they come in the form of smruti they can create desire see the connection vasana sanskar themselves do not give rise to karma uh, janma but they can help you to have desire through smruti so once you have desire what is the sequence ichha ichha leads to karma karma leads to phala phala leads to phala anubhava phala anubhava leads to vasana sanskar vasana sanskar leads to smruti smruti leads to desire and it happens so quick in succession we get confused what is desire and what is that but there is a continuous succession into this and patanjali maharaj elaborates on that if a pashu pakshi janma is going to be vinmukha now now because of my past karma i am going to be a bird moment i am born as a bird i know how to fly oh, from where did i learn the flying i have already been in that vasana sanskara which were lying there in the in the old stock only those vasana sanskaras are brought and then the pakshi will have whatever bhakshana that he is it is supposed to do abhivyakti will be exactly as for the bird it will eat only grains it will not say give me biryani no because that is not proportionate to vasana sanskar so karma is because of ichha of karma phala so you have ichha there will be karma there will be phalam for that phalam will lead to experience experience will lead to sanskara that is called vasana sanskara that will become memory memory will bring back only the experiences memory says i am very neutral i am just bringing you the experience back to you but moment you say ah what a mango it was you say now i want to have अरे मिलेगा तो अच्छा रहेगा सर डिजायर केम नाउ डिजायर केम सॉरी यू हैव ऑलरेडी बुक योर ऑर्डर इट विल बी डिलीवर्ड टू यू देर इज नो रिटर्न नाउ यू आर नॉट गेटिंग इट इमीजिएटली सो यू विल डेफिनेटली हैव राग द्वेश ऑल द क्लेश विल स्टार्ट क्लेश मीन्स फॉर द मोर कर्मा If he is not giving me the mango, then I'll see to it that I get the mango. And that very fellow did not give me the mango, sir. Again, krodha, again karma, because you shouted at somebody for the mango. So mango I wanted, that is one karma. I shouted at him, another karma, and then karma after karma after karma and karma gets accumulated in the karma shayas. That is the relationship between karma samskar and vasana samskar. That is why. we need to understand karma ashaya is a janak of janma sanskar that means janma is because of karma and karma ashaya vasana is janya sanskar janya means when the bhoga is being done when vipaka is happening experience out of that vipaka vipaka leads to vasana and this vasana is very dangerous because it is on the back end keeps propping up and ultimately gets succeeded only when desire is born so from where the desire is getting born desire is getting born from the experiences where are those experiences way inside how many experiences i have i know only those which are suitable for my current birth but there are so many experiences or vasana samskara i have i don't know even all many of us or including me i may be a tiger or a snake or something those samskaras there inside me right now i can't see them yogi can see them so yogi at one go comes to know that oh inside him there is a uh, sarpa samskara there is a vyagra samskara there is this samskara 
and then if they have not yet come to fruition fine otherwise he is able to dissolve them otherwise he is able to destroy them and then he becomes purest of the pure that is called chit where there can no more be vrittis because there are no more memories there are no vasana sanskar karma shaya has been destroyed when everything is completely gone you are ineligible to be in prakriti that is why then the yogi jumps out of the prakriti and when you jump out of the prakriti you are the purusha haryo om purnamad purnam nidam purnat purnam mudachyate purnasya purnamadaay पूर्णमेवशिष्यते ओ शाते शाते शाति हरि ओ श्रीगुभ्यो नम हरि ओ हरि ओम संजय जी जस्ट वेट इफ सम क्वेश्चन कौंदेय मोस्ट ghora out of the karma so even that we can do everything you know submitted to the lord so that is called bhakti this bhakti and uh, here in patanjali yoga sutra what is you know it's a very complex lengthy procedure very very long thing and also there is a lot of complexity is there so for a common man depending upon bhakti that is the easy way and how this is uh, you know explained in by patanjali maharaj hari om the patanjali maharaj has already included bhakti by the sutra ishwar pranidhanatva this sutra itself indicates bhakti but uh, there is a very common mistaken thing by everyone that bhakti is very easy if we if we study bhakti rasayan by swami madhusudan saraswati and all the bhakti granthas of shri sampradaya pramanuja or whether it is vangiya sampradaya or the gaud sampradaya or chaitanya mahaprabhu we will realize that mai adhyasva this itself means you become yogi it is not possible to do sampurna sharanagati or prapatti it may not so delineate the different stages of samadhi but a bhakta goes through all the asampratnat and sampratnat samadhi stages so it is a wrong notion in the mind that surrender is by word surrender is the most difficult thing surrender itself means asmita tattva is dissolved when i was talking all along we were saying that he has crossed the asmita tattva itself means he has become bhakta a bhakta becomes yogi without realizing that he has become yogi a yogi knows that he is becoming an yogi that is the only difference the process the steps the journey is same a gnani a bhakta and a yogi all three go through the same transformation inside that is why a bhakta gets siddhi without even he knowing it because the transformation is happening inside because he is focusing on lord 
He is not focusing on the internal changes that are happening. While yogi is not focusing on Lord, but he is focusing on his buddhi or in his internal changes. So he is aware. A person who is reaching to a destination uh, on the top of the mountain, there is there are two ways. One is you can keep saying which tree you saw, which mountain you saw, and then you reach to the top. And another is you keep singing a song and reach to the top and say that I reached to the top, but I don't know what was there in between. Both are same. One is bhakti. So to think that bhakti is easy and this is easy, bhakti is easy. They are saying simply because. it becomes easier for us to get acquainted or to get started into it for example we all love our wife or our children because we are used to this common notions of loving giving so we do the same thing to the lord that you love the lord you give the lord you do archana to the lord you bow to the lord these are what is called as tangible things tangible things attract the people more because they are easy yoga appears lot of many times intangible because it is through the brain that or the buddhi that you do so the difference is only in the methodology otherwise the process is same at both the places hari om hari om hari om that is clear uh, sanjay ji just an explanation of uh, see when we have an increase in population over the years right so is it because there are other creatures who then evolve into become human beings or are they uh, you know is some uh, chitta nirman happening what is the reason for explaining this there are two things when universe itself is operating on its own principles through the law of karma it is creating different births so it is it is that within the universe some total of everybody is same so that which was animal earlier is now human that which is human now is becoming animal so it is the same thing that is getting circulated that is one part of it so there is no addition to it as such now the question is when you say that suddenly the human population is more or human population is less this is all because of the flux of karma there were all the human beings were barely living being alive for more than 40 years 200 years back every life span was 44 years now it is about 64 years even in india what does that mean because the proportionate suitable karmas for the entire community for the entire humanity is now proportionate to that type of karma so how is it that when you will have higher longer life when you all of them will have shorter life where which which jantu will be there at what point of time it all depends upon which karma is expressing what is the set of karmas because karma is a very complicated thing supposing that i intend to be emancipated so i have to be born as a human being agreed sir but after being born as a human being you should have conducive atmosphere for doing the meditation now conducive atmosphere for doing the meditation means i have to change the backdrop also so accordingly suitable mountain has to be there suitable climate has to be there suitable this is all interlinked so that is why who will be born how much will be born what quantum will be born how long they will stay how suddenly they will disappear there is one island suddenly a tsunami came in somewhere in thailand and the whole thing got wiped out the raurava it is called shiva tandava this happens because cumulative karmas at that point of time when one incidence happens there are 1000 or 10000 different motives being fulfilled by the lord at the same time that is why vivekananda looked at kali mata and composed a poem the poem is very horrible poem but a beautiful poem he says come kalima come come and kill everyone you came in the form of a plague you came in the form of calamity you see god even in this destruction because you see the operation of the forces of universe called devi devi is the force of the universe most of the devis of ours are of destructive nature because prakriti is now hell bent on destruction for what again for the evolution of a person huge animals like dinosaur disappear all of a sudden 
a huge cloud of smoke that lasted for a couple of days in the in the environment because of the meteor falling on the earth so that the even even the sun was invisible the water started boiling all the animals got burned in the boiling water this i'm talking 400 million years ago at whose instance it was happening again the karma what holds as a single thread in the universe is the theory of karma and why we should be focusing so much on karma because it is that which tells you how you came here and it is that which is going to tell you how you can get out of here so the focus is on karma that is why bhagavad gita elaborates karma yoga more sankhya less why sankhya is destination karma is the beginning so that is why you came here because of karma you want to go back better start with the karma but karma alone will no 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 you start with the karma then you will get another instrument called jnana that will take you further and then you will be done so that is how the too much of humanity too less of a humanity one part second thing sir to expect that the human beings are only here in this form what you see on the earth there are millions of planets millions of galaxies you don't know who is existing where who is getting reborn there because we are only used to seeing certain shapes and sizes you can't see deva yuni they are existing right now in front of me in this environment in this atmosphere there are so many jivas and enlightened jivas siddha jivas siddhas are moving here i can't see them my inability doesn't mean they are not existing so it is very difficult if you want to comprehend all this become a yogi hari yog hari om ji just if no one is asking just one addition to this when you talked about that ichha which uh, you know or the vasana or the experience which can again take somebody back uh, into the form so is this uh, i mean is that why we see let's say vishwamitra or whatever you know coming back into the is that the reason why all these things happen see the ichha is of two types frankly speaking ichha is of only one type whenever individualized or centered desire happens sarve bhavantu sukhina is not my desire is universal desire that's why it is universal prayer sarve bhavantu sukhina is lord's prayer not our prayer to lord it is lord's prayer to everybody why because everybody has to be as a constituent of this universe to be happy but a desire comes only when i consider myself to be separate from this universe when i am no more separate than this universe then there is no desire does the tree have a desire to give the fruit or the flower it just comes nobody is using the flower doesn't matter people are happy with the flower doesn't matter this is called karma happening but there is no desire so that means it is possible to have a karma without the desire and there is possible to have karma with the desire now karma without a desire that means prayojana rahit how it can happen that is called leela it is not called karma that is only by bhagwan unless bhagwan has desired how the universe will form no bhagwan has no desire then how the universe is formed that is called desireless desire that is a emanation see there is a difference between emanation and desire i move my fingers here i don't have a desire to move my fingers here it just came it just went there it happened as a natural sahajata when will this sahajata come when any time it can come that's why when the lord created you know when he felt like so that is desireless work work is happening through lord only but it is not through desire he is working individualized or egocentric city leads to desire and it is the egocentric desire that leads to karma so that means desire is not at a fault it is egocentric desire for that matter that is the reason why desire is only labeled when it comes from individual individualized center and when you say uh, let everybody be happy what you have done you have expanded the individuality towards universality 
as you keep on expanding it expanding it till you completely fulfill the universe then the desire gets over and you become ishwara so that is why smaller you are and desiring intense is the desire intense will be the karma broader you are that means you are working on selfless activities there will be less karma less desire born that is why selfless activity is the first step in chitta shuddhi hari om hari om sanjay ji uh, sanjay ji one quick question uh, so gurudev and uh, lot of uh, ishwar pusha have certain desires so for example not desires but like someone would like to eat sweets that like gurudev talks about in a lot of his autobiographies that he loved to, uh, or his pensions that's probably coming from vasna right uh, so the i have two questions one the oem chart and the reference of vasna there is that similar or that's a different concept and two for siddh push do they accumulate vasnas or like there's a way not to accumulate karma when there's no ego involved is there another way that which you can stop accumulating vasna because you are having an experience as a guru as a as a guide so are they still accumulating vasnas it's a very good question vasanas will always be there but i told already that vasanas do not give birth vasanas give you memories so i have a vasana gurudev had a vasana of papadam eating papadam so he said get the papadam i want to eat it i am feeling like eating was so vasana gave him the memory that papadam is good in his memory his vasana told him papadam is good so he got the so what happened vasana got executed now the question is vasana when it presents itself as memory then it prompts desire and this desire leads to karma the question here is realized souls use the vasanas for the sake of prarabdha but not for the sake of creating new karma now creating new karma means the instant that it happened as a vasana as a smriti when it came it did come it got fulfilled but when this was getting fulfilled they are completely aware of the fact that the one who got the desire is not me see it's slightly difficult to understand in the same body i have a complete understanding that all this is illusion yet i am doing everything that is being done here that is possible let us take an analogy when you play with your small children you play with, as if you are a small child so you say that okay i am chase you you chase me everything happens you already know that you are not a child so what happens when the child the one who is actually a child he loses something he starts crying you feign crying because you know at the heart of heart that it is no, i am not the child similarly the realized soul in that particular condition exhibits the vasanas does the karma but none of them are on their kaleidoscope because they have already gone beyond it so getting executed because of past memories and they don't have to really borrow memory from anywhere they already have it because they are in the charam ayushya that is charam ayushya means last birth so already they are carrying the vasanas although they know neither the vasana nor the karma nor the karma phala nor this world nor this geeta nor nothing is existing we all say gurudeva great because he taught us bhagavad geeta everything have we ever seen from gurudeva standpoint what was he doing it's a punya karma isn't it but from his standpoint was it a karma was it a punya karma at all it is a shukla a krishna it happened while this was happening we saw he was into it but he was not into it how can one be into it and not into it that is precisely what the jivan mukta state of mind is he employs the mind or the chitta for the sake of fulfillment of whatever comes into the chitta knowing fully well that chitta is not me that is the state so vasanas are brought used for the purpose of vasana when they are prodding upon the earth 
Jesus Christ was carrying the cross and there was pain and there was bleeding and etc. etc. for us. For him, the body doesn't have pain. The body doesn't bleed. I am not the body. This is not the cross. These are not the people. This is all illusion. Now, it's very difficult for us to imagine two contrasting individualistic ideas in one body. But that is what precisely the Jeevan Mukta's life is. Hari you? Then that is called Leela, isn't it? That yes. is called Leela. Oh, he has reached to the state of Purusha. So he is Ishwara himself. And whatever Ishwara does it, not Karma. It is Leela. So it Leela. is basically... It is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hari you? Thank you. Uh, uh, this is not called Leela. It is called Krida. Krida. Ila is a word reserved only when avatar comes. So Krishna Bhagwan was doing same thing what Lord Guru Deva did, but Krishna Bhagwan's thing is called Leela because he came. Guru Deva went up, so it is called Krida. So Ishwar does, or the Munis and Rushis do Krida. Bhagwan does Leela, and we do Karma. Hari Thank you. Hari Om. Hari Om. That is very clear. Hari Om. Hari Om. One last thing. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Mudirji, I don't think Dilip Ji had a question. He was just uh, doing okay. Hari Om. Okay. Uh, sir, I just wanted to check. So, we have a Jeevan Mukta who's, you know, at the last stage and he's going up. Actually, maybe I didn't word my question properly when I was talking of, let's say, a Vishwamitra or whatever. These are all the highest forms of yogis heading towards... Uh, uh, Jeevan Mukta or whatever. And I was just trying to understand that you talked about this Vasana, which exists, even though, uh, you know, and this desire has the ability to put you back. The Smriti has the ability to put you back uh, into the cycle or get you back. So my only question is, so if you're a Jeevan Mukta or an Avatar, etc., it is very clear. It's the last, even the Vasana cannot help uh, do anything about it. But if you're one step below or a couple of steps below the Jeevan Mukta stage, any of that stage, the yogi can get affected by vasanas and slip in his yes. sadhana. Yes. Oh. And that, that is why there are another question came because of that. Then supposing that I have already gone up 17 ranks, I am supposed hmm. to reach 20th, but on 17th rank, I realize that I got a vasana and I fall down. The question is, then when I will be reborn, I will start at 17th rank or first rank? And that is what precisely the yoga brushed. Such a person is called yoga brushed. And Krishna Bhagavan has clearly given the answer in Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna, every yoga brushta starts his life again at the same level after suffering for whatever fall he has done. So Vishwamitra is a typical example of how vasana can really affect you even at a higher stage. And then it doesn't mean that Vishwamitra went down the drain. Again, he started from there. Again, tapas, again, sadhana, again, annihilation of vasanas. Hariyo.